In this lecture, we'll do a walkthrough in the lab of our summary routes and our default routes. We're using the same lab setup again with three PCs and five routers. They're all pre-configured with their IP addresses and routers R1 to R4 have connectivity to each other along the top path with static routes. R5 does not have any routing configured yet. Let's have a look at that. So I'm here on PC1. Let's just move over to R1 and do a show IP route. And you can see I've got static routes for all of the individual 10.1.0.0 slash 16 networks configured on R1. On R2, I've got routes configured there as well. Again, I'll slash 24s, the same on R3 and on R4. So if I jump on to PC1, and then let's just have a look and see the IP address of PC3. Okay, so PC1 is 10.0.1.10, PC3 is 10.1.2.10. So from PC1, I ping 10.1.2.10. You can see that there's connectivity there. And also I'll do a trace route as well. So I'll trace 10.1.2.10. And you can see it's going 10.1.1, 10.0.0.2, 10.1.0.0.1. And 10.1.1.1. If we have a look back at the topology diagram, it's going R1 to R2 to R3 to R4. Okay, so that is the current setup. If we have a look back at R1 again, you'll see that it's got individual routes for each of the networks going over to the left-hand side. So let's just remove these individual routes. So I'll go config T and no IP route 10.1.0.0255.255.255.0. I can see it's a slash 24 from the routing table. And the next top was 10.0.0.2. So that will remove the first route. I'll use the up arrow to remove the second route, which is 10.1.1 and also 10.1.2 and finally 10.1.3. Again, if I now do a do show IP route, I should see I've got no static routes left in the routing table. And if I try to ping PC3 from PC1 now, this is going to fail because router one doesn't have routes. Okay, so let's replace all of those individual slash 24 routes with a single summary route. So before, if we just scroll up a little bit, I had four separate slash 24 routes for 10.1.0.1.2 and .3. So I can replace that with a summary route. I'll make an IP route 10.1.0.0 and then a slash 16, so 255.255.0.0. And this will cover everything that begins with 10.1. It doesn't matter what the last two octets are. And the next hop address is 10.0.0.2. And if I now do a do show IP route, I've just got one static route in the routing table rather than four. And this should give me connectivity from PC1 to PC3 again. Let's just check that. So I'll do the ping and you see that hopefully in a, a second, this will work. There you go. So it took a couple of pings for ARP and stuff like that. And the ping is now working. So that's how you can configure a summary route. It cuts down on your admin work because you don't need to configure so many routes. It also takes up a little less memory in the routers as well. Okay, so that was the first part of the lab that I wanted to show you. The next thing that I want to show you is the effect of the longest prefix match when we have overlapping routes. So let's go back to the topology diagram again. And we've got connectivity between the routers R1 to R4 along the top path. 
R5 does not have any routes configured right now. So let's fix that. I'll configure a summary route on R5 pointing at the routes behind R1, which all start with 10.0. So back on the lab again, I'll go on to R5 and I'll configure IP route 10.0.0.0, 255.255.0.0. I'll use a slash 16 again as a summary to cover all the networks. And the next hop address on R1 was 10.0.3.1. Then I want to check that I can ping this from the far side of R5. So I'll just have a quick look back at the diagram again. Now, obviously, R5 is going to be able to ping 10.0.3.1 out the fast Ethernet 3 slash 0 interface. I'm going to ping a 10.0 network from the 10.1.3.2 interface, that's fast Ethernet 2 slash 0 on R5, and I'm going to ping PC1. Now, the way that ping works by default, the way that any traffic originating from the router itself works is it uses the exit interface as the IP address. So if I just do a standard ping from R5 going to 10.0.1.10, the source address will be 10.0.3.2 because that would be the exit interface. But I can override this by doing an extended ping and saying I want to use 10.1.3.2 as the source address. So the way I do that is on R5, I'm just going to enter ping, and then it's going to take me through the extended commands. Yes, I do want to use IP. The target IP address is PC1, which is 10.0.1.10. The repeat count is 5 is fine. Same for the size and the timeout. Yes, I do want to use extended commands because I'm going to set the source IP address to be 10.1.3.2. And then I can just take defaults for everything else, hit enter to get those. And it's doing the ping now. And again, missed first couple for ARP, and then the ping was a success. So I do have connectivity between the far side interface on R5 and PC1. Next, let's check and see what path it's actually taking. So I'll do a trace route as well. I'll do an extended trace route with the same settings again. So the target IP address is 10.0.1.10. The source address is going to be 10.1.3.2 again. And I can accept the defaults for everything else. And I can see it went to 10.0.3.1 and then 10.0.1.10. So if we have a look at the topology diagram again, 10.0.3.1 is the fast Ethernet 3 slash 0 interface on R1. So that traffic took the direct path. It went from R5 to R1 and then to PC1. And let's review what's going to happen with the traffic coming back in the other direction from PC1. So I'll jump back onto R1 again, and I'll do a do show IP route on here. And you see we've got that summary route that we just configured. So traffic for all of the 10.1 networks, which includes the 10.1.3.2 interface on R5, is going to go via 10.0.0.2 which is on R2. Let's just look at the topology diagram again. So 10.0.0.2 is the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface on R2. Okay, so traffic going from R5 to R1 is taking the direct path between them, but the return traffic from R1 to R5 is going to go R1 to R2 to R3 to R4 to R5. Let's just verify that that is what's actually happening. So I'm going to jump onto PC1 and do a trace route to 10.1.3.2. So here is PC1 and I'll trace to 10.1.3.2 and you'll see it's going through all of those hops. So that was R1, R2, R3 and R4. So we've got an asynchronous traffic flow here. 
traffic from R5 to PC1 is going directly via R1, traffic from PC1 going back to R5 is going through R1, R2, R3, R4 before it then gets to R5. So with your routing, traffic in both directions is typically going to follow the same path, but it doesn't have to. It's going to follow whichever path you tell your routers to take. All right, so let's fix this now. Let's set it up so that the traffic is going to go directly in both directions. So to do that, I need to go back onto R1 and I'm going to configure IP route for 10.1.3.0, 255.255.255.255. With a next hop of R5 on the directly connected link, which was 10.0.3.2. And if I have a look at the routing table now, I'll do a show IP route. You'll see I've got a route here for 10.1.0.0 slash 16. And I've also got a route for 10.1.3.0 slash 24. So 10.1.3.0 slash 24 is actually a subset of the 10.1.0.0. Both of these routes make it into the routing table because they're not exactly the same. And what's going to happen is whenever I send traffic to 10.1.3.x, it will match both of these routes. But because the second route has got a longer prefix, it's a slash 24 compared to a slash 16, meaning it's more specific, it's the bottom route that will take effect and the traffic will go via 10.0.3.2. Traffic for any other network that begins with 10.1, like 10.1.0 or 10.1.1, etc., will only match the top route, so it will go through the top route. So let's just verify that this is what's going to actually happen. So if I go back onto PC1 now and trace 10.1.3.2 again, we should see this taking the direct path now, and we can see that's what happened. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest-rated course online. Thanks.